when everyone folds your forge to holes You're placing your bed, showing no regret Close your eyes to hide your lies, roll the dice You got me tiptoeing around you like you made a glass Got an invincible fence letting everyone know not to trespass But you're bound to break down, bound to lose Bound to get knocked right out of your when I use my witchcraft You're playing it cool, bending all the rules Talking way too loud, and you're talking rude You're playing a game, driving me insane Your heart is back, and it's a fact, no turning back You got me tiptoeing around you like you made a glass Come out to see uh, you and your new machine today. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> but before we get into that, it's probably a bit obvious by now, but just tell us what is it that you do? <laughs> uh, mainly hedge cutting contracting, um, yeah. hay and hay lidge and straw sales. Yeah, you do a lot of grass, don't you? Yeah, a lot of grass. And yeah. drilling contracting and ploughing, uh, fertiliser spreading and spraying. Uh, we also do mowing as well. Yeah, yeah, we came out to see your mowers back in the summer. The uh, which ones are you running now? Uh, two Cavernland, one front mounted and one uh, trailed rear one. And that's on your 64, 7490. 7490. Right. Yeah. And this time of year, you're flat out on the on flat, the hedge cutting. Flat out hedge cutting. <laughs> yeah. You're running the two machines now. Yeah, we've got a 5570 single head, um, 2019 I think she is, and yeah. we've got a 6085, this one we've just had this season, she's about 2-3 weeks old, with a twin cut uh, 1.5 metre head on. Has it made a big difference to you boys, having the twin cut or? Yeah, being able to push on, uh, just doing one pass on the top. And even on big, big, time farm, time. big farm, few farms on two years growth, and it just right. eats into it. Yeah. Because the front rotor cuts downhill, and then the back one just neatens it up, tidies it up, and so one pass, and it uh, makes a neat job. Yeah. And also less compaction to the farmer for his field around the headland. Does it take much more driving than a single rotor? Or? Yeah, it takes a little bit more power. You can feel it on the tractor, but. It's, it runs it no problem. Yeah. Is it drinking more fuel or no? Uh, a little bit more, but not too much. Just because it makes too much. No, energy. no, not too much. And your hedge cutting tractors? Yeah, we run the 6485. You're running two of them? Yeah, two 6485s. They've been doing the job for a bit now, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's done just over 16,500 hours now. Wow. Um, They're still in mint condition, though. Yeah, pretty robust <laughs> tractors. Look after them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, touch wood, nothing goes wrong with them. It's just odd sensor here and there, and yeah, they're pretty yeah. robust, so yeah. we keep we stick with them. So when did all this start for you then, Mitch? When did you start the edge cutting? Uh, my dad started in the 80s, edge cutting contracting. Yeah. And then, obviously, when I finished school and that, 2004-05, I took it on with a PA 93E on a Massey 6460. Yeah, and then he brought me a new one when we took another farm on. We had a PA 53E high reach machine in, I think it was 2005. Uh, we run that for nine years, and that was uh, a little bit tired when we finished with it. And then we had our first 5570, 
Oh right, yeah, yeah. Uh, we put it onto the 6460 and she was, I was at one farm and he could see air under the wheel. <laughs> so that's when we had to swap the tractor <laughs> for something a bit bigger. So we went for this one with a bigger chassis oh, right. and it handled it no problem. And now you and your brother don't have time to do anything else? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's grown. Uh, and then we swapped that after three years and then I think it was 2017 we decided to buy a second one because we got offered more work. And yeah. then this season we decided to buy the twin cut to try and get on get on a bit more. How much do you get round it? It, it lasts until February, doesn't it? Easy. Yeah, February, March, the weather gets against us through the winter really. Yeah. Getting onto grass fields and finishing off spring corn. But we've got a lot of uh, road ties to do because we cover well nearly every farm in the area to be honest. So you've always run McConnell trimmers? Yeah, we've always had McConnell trimmers. They're the best for you, are they? Well, we've never tried anything else to be no. honest, but just stick with what you know. Yeah, yeah. We've got a good dealer, so yeah. they've been a good machine. Good solid pieces of kit. Yeah. Is it very different to the single rate of it or no? Yeah, it's a lot heavier when you've got the arm out, you can feel it. The, you can notice that on When you've got the head out, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the weight of this head's 480 kilo. Oh, right. So there's a bit of weight in it, you do feel it wobbling. But we have had the wheels ballast on this one, which has helped the job a bit. It's holding the tractor down. Uh, but the single one, you don't really notice it when you throw the arm out. A few years back, we had the um, fourth hitch, so it goes onto the pickup hitch. And when you get into the field, you lift it up and it locks against the undercarriage of the hedge cutter. Oh, right. So it locks the machine solid to save all the rocking when you are in the field. So it's just one below axle brackets. It keeps it stable. But it keeps it stable. And yeah. then when you're on the road, you can drop it down and she floats on the arms on the road. Oh, right. So we managed to fit this to this trimmer as well. So it saves the machine rocking up and down when you're on rough ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got the head in a certain position and the balance of the edge cutter wants to just keep flopping left and right. What flails are you running on this trimmer, mate? Uh, on this trimmer, we've got F10s on the front, which cut down now, as I said before, to cut the thick out, and then competition flails on the back, yeah. which cut uphill to just get the nice finish. Oh, so they're running opposite ways opposite to each Opposite direction, yeah. yeah. Then on the other trimmer we've got, we used to have F16s, the heavy duty flails, but they stopped making them because of the cost for them apparently. Oh, so we right. have to go to an F14, which is a good all round flail to be honest, we're pretty pleased with it. Yeah. And we're quite pleased with this one at the minute. We did one F14s on this, but this is how they come, so we thought we'd give it a try. And it yeah. seems to be doing the job so far. I think your brother's gonna want one as well at some point. Yeah, yeah, he's already <laughs> been on to me to order one. <laughs> I don't think he's going to put up with a single rotor for much longer now. No, no. This one. <laughs> if I'm off spraying or something, I was the other day, he just soon jumps on this he one. He comes back and he's it. been taken out. <laughs> come back and he's gone off on it. <laughs> but it's his sense, really. We might as well run this one than the other one because it's yeah, more yeah. efficient. Yeah, because before you were running the two, two single. Two 55 70s. Yeah. And we look back now and we keep wondering how we used to get round it all. Do it, but we, uh, we always managed to. So did you go for a longer reach option on this when you when you brought this one, Mitch? Or? Yeah, we wanted the, well, we inquired about a head to go on the 5570 and they said you couldn't get that, put the head on it because it was too big for the machine. Right. So we had to get to an 85 series, which is this one. And this is the smallest arm you can get on the 85 series. So it's bigger than that of the machines. Right, okay. But we can pretty much reach everything. We don't struggle for reach. We're no. not doing big verges or anything or big ditches. So we don't need much reach, really. Was there a weight on it getting built next or? Yeah, I think when we ordered it, I think it was a good 12, 12 18 months before we got it. Oh, really? There was a bit of a weight time <laughs> due to COVID, as they keep saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we got it eventually. Uh, well, it is jeans, aren't it? Yeah, we did start the season thinking we didn't know whether it was going to come or not. Oh, and really? We was doing right ground and had the phone call to say, the trimmer's in, and <laughs> it was more my brother jumping up and down. When's it coming? <laughs> so what dealer do you use? Uh, we used uh, Frank Alviti in Ludlow, their main McConnell dealers. 
right, um, yeah, yeah. great service and if you have any trouble they've got all the parts, flails, everything you want on the shelf. Great service to be all honest. When you need it, aren't you? Yeah, and it's only an hour down the road. Well of course it's ideal for you boys. And plus the edge cutters are built in Ludlow, so yeah, yeah, he's on local. the doorstep. Local to us, yeah. On the doorstep to get all the bits as well. Yeah, yeah. You came out to yesterday, you had a little routine. You give Ryan the verges, now you've got the new machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I usually do the he does the side, I do the top, and then he does the verges. Ryan pulls the short straw now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As he's not here today, I'm having to do verges as Everything, well. Everything, yeah. But we yeah. don't usually do verges, to be honest. We get the farmer to do them. Oh, right. Because it knackers the flails, but we just have to... I was going to say, I mean, it's harsh on the flails. We just have to cut it a little bit higher so we're yeah. not cutting the ground. What is the maintenance on the trimmers then? Is there much to do before the season, or...? Yeah, we drop the gearbox oils out, obviously put new flails on if need be. Uh, yeah. Change the filter in the main tank. And that's it, really. The daily routine is grease in the head and the main pivot points on the arm and the PTO shaft. Is it a different operating system to the old to the old one on the joystick here or? No, it's exactly the same. These are motion controls. It's exactly the same as the other one. Yeah. Is that the latest updated system they do, is it? Or? Uh, I think it's the most standard one that they sell, but right. they do do one above it. Uh, revolution with on a joystick and you get a screen and right it tells you everything what the machines doing I think but oh, right. we don't really need that yeah, to be no. honest <laughs> so you've always run the masses then yeah yeah I've always had masses from the start like well my dad had a David Brown to start with well a couple of them I think and then went into the masses oh yeah in yeah. the 80s yeah. they eventually seen the light <laughs> <laughs> these two gems have done their bit for you, haven't they? Yeah, these two 6485 bulletproof. Yeah. Do you reckon the day will come when you have to swap them, or...? <laughs> I don't know. Just keep, keep going, I hope. Yeah. Do you reckon we'll get up to 30,000 hours this month? <laughs> you might just get her there, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Donkey would like a day on one of these. They're the next sister up from his 6290, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, we used to have a 6280, but... Uh, he's more than welcome yeah. to come and have a day on the twin cut, <laughs> if he wants to. Right, well, thanks for having us out. Anyway, the last couple of days, Mitch. Yeah, no nice problem. Come out and see your crack arm with it. <laughs> we'll uh, hopefully come out and see you next year with your second twin cut. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, we'll catch up soon anyway. All right, thanks, Tom. Cheers, Mitch.